Did you say thank you, Lord, for the sun that you felt on your face this morning? No, you got up, took it for granted just like I did. Got ready to come to church. Nice warm today. And what did I do? Well, I complain. It's hot. Oh, it's hot. It's so hot. And then the winter time, going to complain because it's cold. Oh, yesterday, I just, I was, so, forgive me, Lord, but I was complaining. I said, Lord, I can't wait for the winter time. I can handle the cold, but I can't handle this 110 degree weather. You know what I mean. And then the winter time is going to come and I'll be freezing. Lord, I can't wait for the summertime. So, you know, you, we need to think about some things. Thank God for the air I'm breathing. Thank God for the, for the water I drink, the water I have, the food I have on my table. The nice warm sunshine, and Brother Edmonds, you know, he comes from Taiwan, and he's got real thin blood because the tropical, he's from the tropics, right? He's got real thin blood. I mean, if it's in the 80s, he's freezing to death, you know? So we'll go into a restaurant, and they keep it nice and cool in the restaurant, sit down and eat, you know, in fellowship or whatever, and we'll walk out, and they've had that air. I mean, he is freezing to death. And he walks out, and it's 100 degrees, and he looks up to heaven, and he says, Lord God, thank you for this sun. You know what I'm saying? Man, he'll get in that car and I'll be burning up and he'll be freezing to death. I say, hey, brother, would you please turn on the air conditioner, you know? But, but amen. We need to be thankful for what God does. Think about that this morning. Thank God. He, brother, look at your arm and tell him it could be a lot worse than it is. A lot worse. Just to be thankful, praise the Lord God. He's, you're never going to have paradise on this planet. You're never going to have paradise. I know we're looking for paradise, aren't we? We want. I want everything to be perfect. I'm not saying you do, but I do. I want everything to be perfect. And it's just not going to be that way. So we need to look at the situations we're in and say, thank God. Find something to thank God for. Appreciate, appreciate what the Lord has done for you. Why don't you just tell him, thank you for the air you're breathing. Thank you, Lord, for the air I'm breathing. Thank you for the water I drank this morning, the water, the shower. I was able to get in the shower, felt nice warm water, you know, automatic right there as soon as you turn the water on. Praise the Lord. Some people don't have that. We just need to be more thankful, don't we? We need to show God appreciation. We need to show each other appreciation. Hallelujah. So we need to take, take her as an example. Praise the Lord God. She got up immediately, even though she was sick, she got up and she ministered to Jesus. Amen. Think about that. You and I can minister to Jesus today. Amen. Out of everybody on the planet, how many people said thank you for the air they breathe? You, if you did, you ministered to him. Because the majority of the people, they breathe his air, drink his water, experience his sunshine, and never one time acknowledge him in their life. Can you imagine that, that people try to live their lives without God in their lives? It's totally, it is beyond me that a person can live their life without God. You know why they can? Because they feel like it's owed them and they're not thankful for anything that he's done. Not only did he create everything, but then he came and died for us on the cross, shed his blood on Calvary's cross. He didn't have to do that, but he did that to save us from damnation. I ought to be thankful to God for what he's done for me today. He created me, gave me blessings in my life because he's a good God, and then saved my soul from eternal damnation. I want to show my appreciation to the Lord by the, not only saying it, but by the way I live. I just, it blows my mind. People live day by day on the, in the creation that God created and don't even acknowledge Him. They won't live for Him. They won't serve Him. And then think about the, the, the death. He died, and they don't acknowledge that. They just go through life. Man, I want to tell you something. I owe Him my life. He doesn't owe me anything. I owe him everything. Look at your neighbor and say, I owe him everything. Jesus Christ, the Lord Jesus Christ is more important than anything in my life. Nothing more important than that. I was created to worship him. I was created to serve him. He owns me by way of creation and he owns me by way of redemption. And so it's me that, that owes him. Praise God. 
The apostle Paul said, I'm a debtor. In the book of Romans, Paul said, I'm a debtor. He said, I'm a, I'm a debtor to the Greek and I'm a debtor to the barbarian. I, I'm, I'm a debtor for, to those that can speak Greek, the more refined people. He said, I'm also a debtor to the barbarian. Brother Dice said, he, you know, he was a master with words. He said, Paul said he was a debtor to the blockheads. You understand what I mean by that? Because Paul understood what Jesus Christ did for him and how God saved him. So now he's got a debt that he can't pay. And it's not just for the elite. It's for everybody. And that's the way Paul. And so Paul spent most of the rest of, you know, the latter part of his life spreading the gospel, 12, traveling 12,000 miles, land and sea. He wasn't caught up in the landscape. He was caught up in manscape. Manscape. Went through all kinds of hardship trying to pay that debt that he could not pay. Because he was thankful. We got a debt, brothers and sisters, that we can't pay back to God. So what we can do is serve him, live for him. Make him the most important thing in our lives. Have a thankful heart. Show that appreciation. Say it with our mouths. Hallelujah. He don't have to let you live today. He don't have to let me live today. In fact, brothers and sisters, even though he died for me on the cross, he don't have to let me in his heaven. Do you ever think about that? that? That heaven belongs to him. He could look at me and say, you're not coming in here. But I'm going to say, please. And when he does, I'm going to say, thank you. Say, praise the Lord. So let's, let's take this as an example. I want you to look at your neighbor, and if your neighbor's an angel, tell him it could be a lot worse. Yeah. Let's have a thankful heart. I mean, that's why I told you, Bishop appeared so excited and praising God this morning. You know, number one, because he felt God. Number two, because he didn't drown. <laughs> it shocks me that he even went within 100 miles of water. Then he told me this morning he got on the water in an inner tube. I couldn't believe what I was hearing. That's a miracle. But you know what I really believe? I believe that Sister Nicole had a rope tied to her tube. And that rope was tied from her tube to his tube to make sure he'd be okay. I told him before we came out here, I said, there's more to this story than that you're telling me. And I said, there's some parts of this story I don't want to know anything about. Wow. It was. I told you, man, I know. The brother, I don't think the brother can swim. <laughs> Hallelujah. That's why he's so happy this morning because he's breathing, he's alive, he survived, you know, one foot of water. Let's roll it over the rocks, you know. He could have fell off that inner tube and drowned in one foot of water. <laughs> We're glad to have you back, brother. Amen. Praise the Lord. So let's be thankful to God, right? Be thankful to God. I need, see, I got to change my stinking thinking. If it's not for you, this is for me today. I need to change the, I need to change the way I'm thinking. Man, negativity, man, just bombards us and you know come on let's get a thankful heart let's be thankful praise God we should be thankful enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with what with praise hallelujah we should be thankful and bless his holy name he is worthy amen he's worthy well the Bible says having Jesus healed this uh, mother-in-law of Peter the scripture tells us, again, even though he is exhausted, no doubt, when the even was come, they brought unto him many that were possessed with devils. He cast out the spirits with his word and healed all that were, what, sick. I mean, he can't get away. He's here he is in this house, you know, no doubt trying to find some peace, some rest. People find out where he is, man, they're flocking to the house. There's People got demons, demons in them, evil spirits in them, possessed with these spirits. And the Bible said Jesus 
He cast those spirits out. And he healed the sick. Even though he was tired, he took the time to minister to people. Amen. Amen. Now think about that when you get tired. I got to think about that when I get tired. That Jesus never turned anybody away. Being exhausted, being tired. He didn't say to them, say, I'm tired today. I'm exhausted today. Give me some, I need some rest. He never turned anybody away because he was tired. Say, praise the Lord. He was always ready to minister. No matter how tired he was, how exhausted he was, he was always ready to minister to somebody, to cast the devil out, to heal the sick. Praise God. And when he did that, he was showing by his authority and by his power. He not only had a, a power over fever in a body, he had power over spirits. He had power over the spirit world. He had authority over the demonic powers. He had authority over Satan. And he came to crush the authority of Satan. He came to crush the headship of the devil, the authority, the power of the devil that was in people's lives. Amen. Say with me, he defeated the devil's authority. That's why when you live, brothers and sisters, don't walk around in fear of the devil. You shouldn't be afraid of the devil if you're a born again believer. Because Jesus Christ crushed his head. In Genesis chapter 3, the Bible says that his heel would be bruised. But he would crush the head of the serpent. Genesis 3, 15, right? His heel would be bruised, but he would crush the head of the serpent. When was Jesus' heel bruised? When he hung on the cross. And they put his feet on that, on that whatever, that uh, platform and nailed his feet. Drove that stake through his feet, brothers and sisters. And he'd have to lift himself up so he wouldn't suffocate. So fluid wouldn't fill his lungs. He'd have to lift himself up on that cross. And every time he did that, he was bruising his heel. And then the Bible says that he gave up the ghost. He said, into thy hands I commend my spirit. You're right. And he died. He had control of his own, over his own life. But for a while there he was pressing his own body up so it wouldn't suffocate. And when he did that, he bruised the heel. Amen. And that's what that means. The Bible said that the serpent would bruise his heel, but he would crush his head. So when Jesus Christ rose from the dead, that hill that he bruised on Calvary, he took that hill and he crushed the head of the serpent. Amen. And the, and, and the danger's in the head of the serpent. The poison's in the head of the serpent. And when he crushed the head of the serpent, he crushed the authority and the power of the devil. Hallelujah. The one whose hill was bruised took that hill and came down on Satan's head. And defeated Satan's power and Satan's authority. So that you don't have to fear the devil if you're a born again believer. Because his authority, his power has been crushed by Jesus Christ. Amen. Say praise the Lord. Some people walk around through life. They say, well, the devil made me do it. The devil can't make you do anything, brothers and sisters. Because he doesn't have that kind of authority or that power. Do you understand that? Jesus Christ has crushed the head of the serpent. That means defeated his authority and his power. He has no power over me. He has no authority over me, nor does he have power or authority over you. You don't have to listen to him. He can't make you do anything. In Jesus' name, you just tell it, your head has been crushed. Your power, your authority has been defeated by Jesus Christ. Amen. So when Jesus came into the world now, and they're bringing all these demon-possessed people, you know, as the Scripture says here, many that were possessed with devils, he cast out the spirits with his word. All he had to do is speak the word and healed all that were sick. Amen. You know, this was something they'd never seen before. They'd never seen anybody that had this kind of authority. That walk by his word, just walk up and just cast those spirits out of people, those demonic spirits. Brothers, let me tell you something. There's more going on to this world than you can see with your eyes. 
Amen. There's, there's evil spirits that work in people's lives. Some are oppressed, some are possessed. But Jesus, with his word, cast those spirits out. They'd never seen anything like that, that kind of authority. Because normally what they would do, you know, the, this is Jewish culture. If you had a demon, if you had a demon this morning, if you were sitting in the church house this morning and you were devil possessed or demon possessed, you know what they'd do? They'd bring you up to the front and they'd, they would get some kind of a, a smelly plant. And put that spelly root up your nose. <laughs> you know why they put a smelly plant up your nose? To try to gag the devil out. That's the truth. Hallelujah. Amen. Did it work? No. <laughs> if, I couldn't get, if I couldn't get the devil. And I'm talking about Jewish culture. If they couldn't get the devil out by putting a smelly root, plant root up your nose, then, you know, some of them believed in a magical ring. Okay? And they would evoke or invoke the name of Solomon. Now, I'm not going to get into that history, but when Solomon backslid, he backslid a long ways. Amen? And it's believed that when he backslid, they got in all kinds of, you know, sorcery and witchcraft, etc., so they believe if you had a ring, you could evoke a magic ring. You can invoke the name of Solomon. And when you did, that devil would come out. Did it happen? No. Amen. Say praise the Lord, church. Or what they would do is they would call on a more powerful spirit. And I'm not about a devil, demons. So you got a lesser demon in somebody and they would call on a, a stronger, more powerful demon to come and get rid of the lesser powerful demon. Well, what do you have then? <laughs> you got a person with the more powerful demon. No, he didn't join forces. He just said, you go on. I'm, I'm going I'm to move in. I'm going to take over. Hallelujah. He would join, they wouldn't join forces, man. He said, you go on, you little devil. I'm taking over. Hallelujah. <laughs> Seriously. Praise the Lord. Now, I thank God that we don't have to resort to that kind of stuff. you got a devil this morning. I'm not going to put a root up your nose and gag the devil. I'm not going to, you know, I don't have no, you see, I don't wear no rings. Right? Hallelujah. Aren't you glad, man, I don't have a bishop's ring and Solomon's ring. and Hallelujah. I don't wear no chains. Around my neck, don't have a bunch of rings on my finger, you know how to look. I was in the gym the other day and I was kind of laughing because there was this, this rap song that came on and he was singing, I got, he said, I've got big things, I've got big rings, I've got big chains. <laughs> and they came with no strings. And I go, Woo, you go, dude. <laughs> Hallelujah. So he talking about all his chains, big chains, big rings, big things, and with no strings. And I go, I don't have any of that. Hallelujah. I just have Jesus. Amen. Praise the Lord. <laughs> I just, I was, that was so funny. I thought that was so funny, man. That's <laughs> so funny. Hallelujah. But it did, I'll be honest with you, it had a pretty good beat. <laughs> At least I got the beat right. <laughs> but anyway... Don't have no magical rings on, no mag I, you know, I got to check Brother Timothy, though, because he's, he's a Catholic priest, and <sighs> got to make sure, you know, because, I mean, I don't know, he might have some kind of chains or rings or whatever, hallelujah, but I don't have any of that. All I have is the name of Jesus, and the authority comes in his name. And so you got a, if you've got a demonic spirit in you, possessed with one, oppressing you today, all you got to do is just come up here. We'll, we'll just pray for you in the name of Jesus. We'll command by the word of God that spirit to leave you. And, and if you're willing for it to go, it'll go. If, you're not, if you want it to stay in your life, it's going to stay in your life. If you want drugs to stay in your life, drugs are going to stay in your life. If you want to be bound to something, you're going to be bound to something. If you want to be bound to, but if you want to be free, there is power 
in the name of Jesus, power in my God today to set you free from anything and everything you're battling. I'm telling you, brothers and sisters, I'm giving you a hope. Jesus came to give you a hope. And you can go to the psychiatrist and you can go to the psychologist and you go to all of these people that try to, and that's all right. But Jesus Christ came to set you free. Not from just demonic spirits, but from the bondage of sin. He came to heal you, not just if you're sickness physically, not to heal you of demonic oppression and possession. He came to heal us of sin sickness. We're, we're sick in our body. We're sick in sin, man. You might not have a devil. You might not be addicted today. But if you haven't been saved, you've got a problem. It's called sin sickness. And you say, what's wrong with me? I know there's something wrong with me. There's something wrong with me. There's something wrong with everybody. It's called sin. But Jesus Christ came to heal you of that sin sickness. So again, even though he's exhausted, he doesn't lay his head down and sleep. He gets up and manifests the crushing of Satan's headship, his authority, his power. The enemy's not in charge here. He's not in charge in my life. He's not in charge in your life. He's not in charge in your family's life. Jesus Christ is in charge. He's the authority that has come and brought, given us victory. Say praise the Lord God. How many of y'all were bound? But he set you free. He set me free. He set me free. Amen. Praise the Lord. So he always, he never turned anybody away. No matter how tired he got. Amen. Because he saw the need of mankind. Brothers, I don't, I don't know where you are today, each individual today, but I want to tell you something. If you're breathing his air and drinking his water, he cares about you. And he can do it. He can, he can change your life. He can change your life. He changed mine. And I thank God for that because the enemy doesn't have power or authority over us anymore. We have power and authority over him in the name of Jesus. And I, I just got to remember sometimes, Lord, you know, if I get tired, whatever, praise God, I'm going to trust you, God, because people need to be ministered to. So we rely on the Spirit of God, not on our own abilities, not in our own strengths, but in his power and his strength. Say praise the Lord. I'm going to say this to you. You'll never be more tired, more exhausted than when you're trying to minister to people. You're teaching Bible studies, teaching them the Word of God, praying for the sick, praying for people to be healed, praying for people to be delivered. I'm going to tell you something, brother and sister, you're going to get exhausted physically. But Jesus always had time, no matter how tired he got. Isn't that amazing, brother and sister? Hallelujah. Thank God for a, a Savior like this. Tireless, tireless, man. Think about Brother and Sister Edmonds over there in Taiwan. Brother and brother, sisters, if y'all had a chance to go over there and spend about a week with them, you'd be exhausted. You know, he's in his 70s now. I told him the other day, I said, you're 35. <laughs> so you're not, I said, you're not 75, you're 35, man. I've never seen a 75-year-old man move like that man. You know, and they just go, they travel hundreds of miles from one city to another, spreading the gospel, got churches in different places. They just never stop serving God. Amen. Now, that doesn't mean he never takes a break. But I want to tell you something, you ever get around him, it'll blow your mind. Just how dedicated and how committed he is to the kingdom of God. Amen. Praise the Lord. It just doesn't seem like he ever gets tired. Hallelujah. 